Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Welcome back to the Things You Missed in the Lords of the Fallen series. Today, we'll be discovering how to unlock a completely missable NPC who sells many amazing Inferno spells and find the item needed to purchase Boss's Remembrance equipment, along with so much more. So let's jump straight into it. At the end of the last episode, I showed you this unopenable door in Skyrest right by Exacta Dunmire. And though you'll see you can traverse through it in Umbral, at the bottom of the stairs is another locked door. So let's firstly progress through the next area and then figure out how to unlock this door. To do this, first head down the steps opposite Dunmire on the other side of Skyrest. You'll find yourself here where you can grab the old Mornstead spear. Once you've spoken to the traveling merchant and acquired the stick, the next area is very self-explanatory. I know it's a hot but the tree that does. Just take out all the enemies and smash all the crates and barrels to make sure you're not missing any loot. The only potentially missable thing here, carefully drop off onto this plank and behind you under the bridge will be two small smithing stones. And just so you don't miss it, up the stairs at the room in the middle, you will find a permanent vestige that you can go and light. However, before you rest there, clear the rest of the area first, just so you don't accidentally respawn all the enemies. Once you've cleared this area, get yourself back on the plank we were on earlier, and if you peer into Umbral, you will see a platform that we can traverse. So go ahead and do that, and over on the other side, you can loot the weapon, the Reject's Blade. Before the next section, I'd like to thank the sponsor for today's video, Dungeon Hunter 6. This is a free-to-play mobile ARPG with both PvP and PvE modes, including Guild Wars and Raids for a rich multiplayer experience. You can choose from multiple different classes to then slay bosses and make them serve you. And what I mean by that is bosses are not just there to be defeated. You can loot them, ride them, fly them, and also summon three of them into battle to create your four member squad. But that's not all. You can even shapeshift into them to harness their ultimate power. For a mobile game, Dungeon Hunter 6 offers a really great visual experience, especially with the stunning skill animations for multicasting. You can download the game for free now on both Android and iOS by using the QR code on screen or the link below in the description. And by using my link, you will obtain a special starter pack worth $50, which includes 10 summoning scrolls, one SSR rarity lieutenant, the demonic wolf, and an accessory pack. And that's not all, you can even use your game account to enter the Lucky Spin launch event for free to win great prizes like the iPhone 15 Pro Max, PS5 and much more starting on October the 15th. Now climb up the Bone Bridge and you will encounter this enemy that is particularly powerful, especially at low levels. These flying moth women things are very tough. So if you want, you can just sprint past and go ahead and loot the Pale Eye Shield from the end of the walkway. If you want, you can completely ignore all the enemies here and just get yourself back into Axion. One more thing to do before we move on, if you go back to the Vestige and traverse back into Umbral, you will see a stigma that you can interact with for some lore and some Umbral scouring. Now rest up and let's figure out how to get to the other side of that door that we encountered at the start of the video. If you did need to rest, be very careful as you're once again clearing this area, because ideally you want to make sure you've got all of your healing and consumables ready for the next section. Now that all the enemies are dead, you can drop down these two ladders, which are on the right hand side of you as you're looking out from the vestige. At the bottom is a series of precarious walkways that you need to traverse. Be very careful because there are many enemies lying in wait ready to try and push you off, and there is a few jumping sections as well. There's nothing important that's missable here, so once you've reached the end and you've made sure the area is clear, you can pull this lever to bring the lift down to you. Head up the lift and just in front of you, you can loot a new armor tinked Ice Grip. As with all armor tinks, it looks different on different armor sets. However, later on in the game, when you loot Fitzroy's set, this tinct turns you into a golden knight, and it looks amazing. Now head down the stairs, and on your left-hand side will be a door that you can't open yet, as you need the Skyrest Bridge Key. 
Go halfway along the bridge and then traverse into Umbral, and you'll see another stigma you can interact with for some more lore and Umbral scouring. Diviner, dear. Once you've done, head to the end of the bridge, but stay in Umbral. Don't use this effigy yet. As you can see, if we walk up this spine, the way is blocked, so turn back around and head the other way. Now, there is probably an easier way to do this next section, but this way is far quicker and far more fun. Roll against the wall like so, and just make sure to angle your thumbstick ever so slightly over to the left. Once you get the angle, you will easily be able to roll down to the platform below. It may take a few tries, so try not to overshoot it. It's much better to accidentally roll into the wall 10 times rather than making too drastic of a motion and falling into the abyss. Now that you're down here, you can loot the faithful bludgeon weapon and you will be ambushed by a few umbral enemies. Once you've taken them out, extend this bridge and now head up the stairs and up this ladder. Once up here is another one of them horrible moth enemies that you can just ignore should you wish. They do tend to drop some decent loot. As you can see, this one dropped a vestige seed and I think that's pretty much a guaranteed drop. So it may be worth killing them if you are comfortable enough. But most importantly, the reason we came up here was to loot the Crimson Rector Sword. And in this video, I am actually using the Thorned Crimson Rector Sword for my build. It has less attack power than the Crimson Rector Sword that you just looted, but the Thorned version also has bleed buildup. Now that we're done here, we can head across the huge spine in the middle, connecting the two sides of Skyreth Bridge. You'll want to be very quick because two Reapers will ambush you, and until you know how to deal with them, they can be terrifying enemies. Grab the loot from the middle as quick as you can because this is exactly why we are here. This is the Skyreth Bridge key. And should you wish, you can now emerge from Umbral back into Axiom if you don't want to deal with the Reapers. Next, meet me at the top of the stairs, and once I've dealt with the Reapers, we're then free to loot the Crimson Rector shield. This will now also allow us to open this door, and this is the door that will lead us back to Exacta Dunmire. However, before that, head down the stairs and hop over the barricade, and you can use the Skyrest Bridge key to open these big double doors here. There is a lot to do in Umbral here, but first, head to the end of the room, and in this chest, you can loot a full armor set. Also, scattered around the walls of this area are lots of faint vigor skulls, so make sure you grab them before you leave. Now let's enter into Umbral once again, and I'll show you what we need to do to free the hidden NPC. Head up this ladder, and remove the first Umbral Parasite, weakening the entity. Now, if you drop down and roll off the side here, you'll see another one out of reach. What you need to do for this one is go to the other side of the room, and again, you can soulflate to move this bridge. Now, carefully drop down onto it, and you can interact with the parasite and get rid of that one as well. Now, soulflate again to drag yourself back to the other side of the room and head up the ladder. And there is one final umbral parasite halfway up the stairwell in the next room. However, as we're heading back, make sure you go through this doorway as well, because down here you can loot the princess's sting pendant. This pendant is great for people who are very confident in their abilities, because you will deal significantly more damage if you have a minuscule equip load. And now finally, the most important reason we are here, head up the ladder, and now that you can pass through the umbral entity, you can loot the searing accusation. Now go all the way to the top of the stairs in the next room, and you can speak to this tortured prisoner and hand over the searing accusation. And as I'm showing you the last few pieces of loot in this area, along with the stigmata, the only other thing to know about the tortured prisoner now that you have given her that catalyst, when you reload the area, she will be gone. Get yourself to the Pieta boss arena, and she will be waiting for you there, unlocked as a merchant of Inferno spells. Also, when you progress far enough along her questline, she will give you the Searing Accusation back, so you can use that as a catalyst slightly later in the game. Now that you've finished with that Stigmata, you've grabbed the Vigor Skulls and the Short Javelin, it's time to move on to the next area. 
For this next part, I'll meet you back at the vestige we unlocked earlier. Head up these ladders and this whole next section you want to be in Umbral. Straight ahead of you behind the crates, you can loot the full condemned starter set, including the broken bucket. Now head across the wooden beam, and once you've dealt with all the enemies, go around the ladder, and behind yet more barrels, you'll find the Empyrean Grenade. Now go to the other end of the room, and you can loot three Umbral Vertebrae, which if you don't know, they replenish your Soulflay charges. Now drop down the ladder, and once you have introduced yourself to Damarose, you can head out here and loot the three bleed resistance bomb. The clip off makes me... You've now done everything you need to do in Umbral, so rest at the vestige and switch back to Axiom. Now, once again, take the route you just did, dropping down the ladders until you enter into Scourged Sister Deleth's boss room. There's many different ways to tackle her, but I strongly recommend baiting her into the area you start the boss fight in, because you get her away from all of the Umbral Parasites, and you can use the pillars as cover in Phase 2. In Phase 1, she seems very easy. However, don't be fooled, because when she empowers, she gets significantly more aggressive and powerful. This may take a few attempts. Just make sure you use the pillars as cover every time she uses her big blood whirlwind attack and you should be absolutely fine. At the end of the fight being rewarded with her leg wrappings, her flail and a vestige seed. Before you head down the stairs, come over here and you can loot a quest item that you need to hand in to Exacta Dunmire. Now go down the stairs and on the right you can soul flay this body for a saintly quintessence. Head up the stairs and we are finally in Pilgrim's Perch. After Sparta kicking this enemy off the ledge, there is some minor loot on the left-hand side, and if you jump over these platforms, you can loot the Lacerating Knife. Now climb up the ladders and use one of your Vestige Seeds so you have a checkpoint before we progress into the next area. Now that we are in Pilgrim's Perch proper, you want to be very careful of the plethora of ranged enemies and spellcasters in this area, like this one up here. They can and will hit you from miles away, so always have some ranged attacks on hand to deal with them. Next up, you'll encounter a few of these cage head enemies, which pack a tremendous punch. However, they are nowhere near as intimidating as they initially seem. As you see me doing here, one great method is just baiting out one of their big slow attacks, making sure you're outside of the reach of it, whilst simultaneously charging up a heavy attack. This will absolutely wreck them in 4-6 to six shots depending on the strength of your weapon. Another way to do this is actually to use a Soulflay charge, and then just flick the left thumbstick in the direction you would like to Soulflay them. Using this method, you can flay their soul off the edge of a platform, and when their body is then reconnected with their soul, they just fall to their doom. It really is that simple. So soul flaying these guys could be your best friend. Now we need to do the whole of this first area in Umbral. So let's sacrifice ourselves and then backtrack up this spinal bridge. At the top, you can grab the minor with assaults. And then all the way at the bottom, once you've defeated the few enemies, you can grab a new bow and some pulsing arrows. Now let's head the way we came and back up the bridge grabbing the loot from near the spellcaster we defeated just a second ago. Now you'll want to soul flay your way across this chasm, and you can kick this plank down, so should you die, when you come back, you can do this area in Axiom and no longer need to go to Umbral. Be careful as you drop down here for a new emote. Alternatively, you could have less of a death wish than me and just use the ladder. And at the top, across this precarious plank, be very careful because a cage head is waiting around the corner. Once you've defeated these enemies, there is another path in Umbral around the back here. 
but switch back to Axiom for now to make sure that the eye isn't getting too angry and head up this ladder. This next platforming section can be a nightmare because there are many ranged enemies integrated with a jumping section. So traverse these few platforms as best you can, grab the hallowed praise and head up the ladder. At the top of the next ladder, get rid of the spellcaster, and then if you have any ammunition or mana left, use your ranged attacks to take out the few enemies below you. Once you've dealt with this spellcaster, before you progress forward and deal with the other enemies on the platform below, make sure you're in Umbral and look behind yourself. You will see these red pustules which are very dangerous. Don't trigger them if you're anywhere near them. Make your way past them and you can loot the Holy Blood Ring. Now head back up and you can use your ranged options to deal with the enemies below. Alternatively, the cage head might be very kind and just throw himself off for you. <gasps> Once you've cleared the area, drop down very carefully onto this wooden beam and you can loot the Perdam Falchion. This is a fantastic weapon for a dex build, so keep it in mind if you are specking into agility. Now I can show you what I was talking about earlier as I soul flay this cage head spirit into the abyss. Now let's climb the ladders and get back to where we were. And up here, if you're not already in Umbral, do so now so that you can soul flay out this spinal bridge and jump over it. Now progress up this structure and soul fly your way across the platforms. And on the other side, be very careful as you're making your way to the edge of this platform to grab the Thorned Crimson Rector Sword. A sword I mentioned earlier and one I strongly, strongly recommend for a strength build. Now double back on yourself and make sure you push down this ladder so you have a shortcut should you die. And you can hop over to the other platform dealing with the spellcasters. Just be very careful of the cage head because you likely have very little healing left by this point. As this has been a long section without any rest. I did stupidly get myself killed here so bear with me as I sprint back as quickly as possible. And now that I'm back here I'm going to do exactly what I advise you to do. Run past the enemies, grab the vestige and now once you have a checkpoint now you can go back out and defeat them all. Now that we've grabbed that vestige, before we move on, there is one more thing we missed that I said we'd revisit later, and that is the area round the corner here in Umbral. So make your way back here, and then if you're a little bit less dumb than me, you'll notice there's a ladder that you can climb down, or you can do what I did and just jump down, nearly killing yourself. Down here is a flower bed that you can use to plant a vestige seed. I don't advise you do so though. We now already have the Vestige of Blind Agatha activated, and we have no other reason to come back here. So head round the corner and you can loot the Defaced Ring. Once you've grabbed that, I'll meet you back at the Vestige of Blind Agatha, and we'll move on to the next area. Now that we're at this Vestige together, we're going to head this way first. Actually, I should mention, quickly go and speak to the NPC to exhaust his dialogue, and you can ignore the door him for now. It needs a very expensive key to get in, and it is a very late game area, so currently it is a worthless and very expensive purchase. Now that you've cleared out these few enemies, before we head outside, as you can see, if you do go into Umbral, you can get rid of the water and progress up these stairs here. Don't worry, we'll come back here later. For now, let's head outside and take out the many spellcasters that are going to start firing projectiles at you. Once they're all dead and you've grabbed the loot, jump over to the other platform and continue along being very careful of the cage head that's going to come and attack you. I do try and fumble to use the soul flay strat however no worries once he's dead let's continue on and at the end here we will drop down the ladder. Here is another location you can use a vestige seed however we have literally only just activated a vestige so we'll ignore that and move on. You'll see there's a currently inaccessible shortcut just opposite so let's head down for now. Down here will be a load of enemies, including a moth lurking around somewhere. So go ahead and grab the Bowl of Revelations from here straight away, just in case you die. This is a very important item, and this is what you need to purchase boss equipment. Once you've dealt with all these enemies, or if you just wanted to move on, make sure you grab the Lucky Paw from the corpse hanging up here, and then we'll head up the ladder opposite. 
Be careful of the enemy that will start shooting at you as you take another ladder. And at the end here, you can loot three umbral vertebrae. Progress a bit further and you'll find a way to escape from umbral and also activate the shortcut by kicking the plank. And as you get to the end of this section, you'll find a spellcaster with an umbral parasite and you will be promptly ambushed by two cage heads. So deal with these in any way you see fit. I strongly suggest plunging attacks. And once they're dead, as you'll see, as long as you're in Umbral, there is an Umbral entity blocking our way. So as you always do, trace the tentacles to the end and get rid of the parasites. When you get to the bottom one, you can also loot the Book of Sin from here. And now that's done, let's head through. As you're entering this area, you could use a Vestige Seed if you wish, just in case, but we are just about to unlock a shortcut back to the Blind Agatha Vestige. Deal with these enemies, head down the ladder, and right in front of you, you will see a lift. Be careful of the few spellcasters, but once you've dealt with a few enemies around, it's as simple as hopping on the lift and going back up to the Vestige. Now that you've unlocked that shortcut, let's go back down again. Once you've once again dealt with the spellcasters, head along this plank and you can loot the Radiant Vaults. Now we're going to drop down below and deal with the dogs and the knight. Once they're dead, you can loot the prison cell key from the knight's corpse. And you want to immediately give this to Galinda to finally unlock the blacksmith. There's also a chest behind this door in Umbral where you can loot the Defiance Ring. And if you wish, you can come back down into Galinda's cell once you've rested to loot a few smithing stones. Now we have just picked up quite a few things over the last 15 minutes. So head back to Skyrest and do all the upgrading you need. Don't forget to upgrade your Sanguinarix. And of course, now is a good time to do other things such as looking at the Bowl of Revelations to see if there's any Remembrance gear you want to buy. And most importantly, you can finally upgrade your weapons. So make sure you speak to Galinda and upgrade your weapon of choice. And once you're happy that you have purchased everything you want and done all your upgrading, we'll go back to the Blind Agatha Vestige. And this time at the end of this corridor, we'll traverse into Umbral and head up the staircase that we passed earlier. It's worth killing the moth enemy if you're comfortable doing so, because they usually drop some really good loot. And more importantly, just here, we can loot the Umbral Eye of Rosamond, which Molhu can help us socket into our lamp back at Skyrest Bridge. Moving on, you will see a heck of a lot of these red exploding pustules, so be very careful as you traverse down this area. And at the end, you can loot the Antique Hallowed Sentinel set. Next, you want to head up the stairs and outside, and on your left-hand side, you can loot the Pridebound Tinct. Now emerge from Umbral, and I hope you bought a lot of ranged weapons with you, because it's time to cheese a lot of enemies with our ranged abilities before we drop down, because there are a ton of things waiting down there, ready to kill us. Once you've dealt with most things, feel free to drop down to mop up the dregs, just be very careful because there are some powerful enemies down here. And once they're all dead, you have got a lot of juicy loot to go and grab. Make sure you use the soul siphoning ability of your lamp so that you don't miss any vigor. And then from this cage, you can grab the hallowed sentinel scripture. And back in Umbral, you'll be able to interact with this stigma. A warm breeze blowing softly across the sand. Also, before we go anywhere, make sure you kick down this shortcut ladder. 
Now we're going to head over the wooden planks. There is a flower bed that you can use here should you wish. And as you progress a little bit further, you can loot an ardent penitent head cage just here. Make sure you're in Umbral, and then further along the platform still, you can use your soul flaying to hop over to the very end. Once you've dealt with all the enemies around here, grab all the loot, including, most importantly, the Relic of Perpetuation. As I say, I want to leave this series as spoiler-free as possible, so all I'll say about the various items that we've been picking up throughout this video is go and speak to all of the NPCs you encounter, primarily the ones in Skyrest, and the game will prompt you if these items are of any use to them. We now have one final thing to do for the first segment of Pilgrim's Perch, and that is a boss fight. So make whatever preparations you want to make, and then meet me back at the Vestige of Blind Agatha. From here, we'll take the shortcut lift down, and then due to this enemy being a knobhead and pushing me back on the lift whilst I was trying to equip my fashion, we'll take it back up again, and then back down again. And finally, once you're down here and you have dealt with the spellcasters, we'll head past them and down the ladder. Use the lever to call the lift up to you, and once you get to the bottom, you may as well send it back up again just in case you die, so that the run back isn't as tedious. Down here, you can also interact with Damarose the Marked again. Don't worry if you don't want to buy anything from her stock at the moment. She will move to a more permanent location further on in the playthrough, and none of her items are going anywhere. And now it's time for us to try and defeat the Mistress of Hounds. On the surface, this is one of the easiest boss fights in the game. She is incredibly squishy, and nearly every single attack will stagger her. The only problem is the infinite amount of hounds that spawn to protect her. You cannot use a strategy like I tried to do, where you defeat all the hounds first, and then focus on the mistress. They will respawn indefinitely. This boss fight is more of a damage rush. Deal with the initial few hounds so that it's just 1v1, and then you basically want to DPS her down as quick as you can. Beware because more hounds will spawn pretty quickly, but as I say, she is very squishy and staggerable, so for the most part, offense really is the best defense in this fight. And with that done, you will acquire her weapon and her sword, along with a vestige seed and an ammunition satchel. And with that, you have completed the entirety of the first segment of Pilgrim's Perch. Don't use a vestige seed here like I did, because at the exit to the cave, you will find the vestige of Oleron. Rest up there instead and head into the Forsaken Fen, which will be the topic for part three of this series. Please let me know if you would like me to continue on with this, because at the end of the day, as much as I want to make a particular video, if people aren't enjoying the series and it's not getting viewed, I will move on and do something that more people would like to watch. So please let me know in the comments by liking the video, by subscribing to the channel. All of these things help me know if I should continue on with this series. And with that being said, all that's left for me to say, my friends, is thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.